Now I've been told that these weren't made by the Lucas Car Division, these were made by the Aerospace Division. Are you enjoying our Lucas fuel injection series? Because that's what it is, it's shaping up into a series now. So there's the first one where I talk about it on the car, um, we're talking about the sort of functionality of it. Second one where I was rigged up that test rig, which you'd have seen. And now we're gonna have a closer look at the actual metering unit itself. I think we'll, we'll, we'll strip it down and have a look at the functionality uh, how it works, why it does what it does, and then we'll have a better understanding of it, I think. So we'll uh, go next door, put it on the bench, and have a look. So on the bench, what we've got, we've got delivery to number one cylinder via this union, and then we've got a pipe going down to it and our injector. Then we've got so this is this is the the metering head. This is this is what does the control, and this is the actual distributor part of the body. So we've got the high pressure fuel in there, and then we've got a vacuum delivery here. Now remember, this is controlled via the vacuum. So all this controls the vacuum, decides how much how much metered fuel will be injected into the engine via the corresponding pipes and injectors. So this is your barometric control, which is, works out your altitude. And this is, is the actual vacuum control, which, which decides on how much fuel trim you're gonna have when it, as you rev the engine up effectively, open the throttles up. And as I said, this is not connected to the butterflies in anything other than the vacuum. So obviously as the butterflies open, it changes the vacuum in the manifold and the depression, and that's, that's where this, this comes in. So there's not a, it's not connected via a throttle you know, pedal or a cable or anything else. There is a cable attached to it. That goes onto the choke enrichment piece, which is here. So that attaches to your choke lever effectively. But none of your you know, actual throttle pedals attached to it. It works purely by the vacuum. So that's our vacuum. We'll remove that. We'll get, we'll get our injector off, our number one injector, take that out. And that's that. And then next thing we have our drive. So this is our drive off a camshaft, which turns our rotor, which effectively operates, uh, it keeps it in time and, and decides when it will inject and you know to which cylinder when. So that comes out of there like that. That's our drive unit. In the back of here, we have a little dog drive. There you go, a little dog drive there, which transfers the drive from this part to the actual rotor internally. And then we have, under here, we have our actual control units. So this shows our actual controls. Effectively this slot here is what, what alters, alters the, the fuel trim but that we'll have a look at another time. For now, we're gonna concentrate on this bit. So we take the metering head off there, or the control head, as it were. I don't know the correct name for it, but anyway. We'll take this bit off. This is all our vacuum and control system. So we take that off. There's our diaphragm that it all works via. We'll have a proper look at that later. That's a high pressure in, that's our return. And obviously the drive comes in the end here. So this is the distributor unit, and each one of these ports will distribute to the correct cylinder. So that's number one, and then we've got number two, we've got three, and then we go around this side, we've got four, five, and six. We have, a, we have another port here, this is, this, this is just I think for inspection, I'm not entirely sure, and there's another one there, which is, is again, I think probably for setting up and checking pressures, I'm not sure about that one. And then we have our port in and our port out. So this is high pressure in, as we discussed, 110 pounds, and this is excess fuel exiting that isn't required, that isn't used in, in the actual metering and injection of things. So these are the little pistons. 
that the vacuum actuates upon and that's what controls the fuel trim. So we're going to look at those in a minute. And then as I said, this is our drive and that connects to this piece, this dog drive that then connects the rotor. We'll have a look at that. I'll take the rotor out now. So I'll take this, this little bolt, banjo bolt out. That's our number one. Because I've already taken this apart, I don't have the O-rings in here, so this can just pop out by hand. So you have a big circlet that retains this normally, I've already removed that. So there we go, let's take this out. So that's our rotor. So that's our distributor body, and that's our rotor, what's inside it. So as we can see, the, the fuel comes in here, and that goes via a port in there, and then that ends up in this in this part of the of the of the distributor body. And then we've got this is an exit port to number one, and then we've got various inlet ports. We'll have a look at that in detail in a minute. So we put that to one side, we don't need that at the minute. But there we see the drive. So that's what drives it. This piece goes into there, like I said about. And this is the piece that goes into the camshaft, camshaft driven. So that goes there. And then, so this stays still within the body. And then this would be turned around like this. See, it turns it around like that. Can you see it moving around? So that's, that's what it does effectively. Let's concentrate on number one at the minute. We're looking at number one port. Can we see that's open at the minute? I'll get a little light to illuminate that a bit better. Can we see that's open, that port? If I move it round a bit, we'll see it close. See it starting to close? And then I'll kind of bring it back so it's open. So that's, that's where our meter fuel will, will exit the rotor through the distributor body, then through the banjo bolt, then through the hose or pipe to the injector itself. So we'll have a look at that in a minute, see what actually happens there, we'll take it apart. So as I say, we're looking at the body. So this is the bit that turns round. So it's this piece that turns in here, you see? That's the drive. So let's get this apart and see what we got. So we've got five little Allen bolts in here. So we'll take these out. Now I've been told that these weren't made by the Lucas Car Division. These were made by the Aerospace Division. So they're extremely fine tolerances. I'm not sure if the car people worked those tolerances. Although to be honest, I would have thought a diesel pump would have been to very high tolerances. But maybe the aerospace people did those as well. Now I suppose diesel is actually physically thicker, isn't it? If you think about it, it's all quite oily opposed to petrol. So maybe the tolerances are a, you know, a bit greater with a diesel pump, the diesel injector pump. So we take that off there. Now we can see our drive. Now we can pop this out, the rotor out of the center of our distributor body. There you go, that's coming out like that. There we're out, that's showing all the ports. So there we are. That's that bit. So if we take this drive flange off the back and then we can take our little shuttles out, our little metering shuttles and pistons can come out and we can see what we've got. Now you can see there's quite a lot of wear on there and there's wear on there. Now what lubricates this is the petrol itself. Now since um, lead's been removed from petrol that was the lubricant for this. So really you need to run a very low ratio of two-stroke mix. It's, it's a good idea to keep these lubricated, especially with the modern fuels. But anyway, that's, that's something more about that another time. And that's just a little spacer. So we move these out of the way because we're not looking at those at the minute. And now we're going to look at this as our actual shuttles themselves. So we push, push these out. There we go. That's one set of delivery. And then we'll go to the other set as well, get rid of the, get these out so we can see what we got. Now if we look at these, you can see we've almost got a reverse of each one. So that that's longer, and that's shorter. And they're same, that's longer, that's shorter. So it sort of reverses. Well that's because it then allows it to use the correct porting, deliver to the correct cylinder, as it were. So that's all to do with how this works. So when you when you put them in, it 
you know, it, it's it's dependent on which cylinder we're trying to deliver to, and that's that's how this works. These are the back stops, so these remain still against the back on the drive flange, and it's these that do the moving around, do the shuttling individually as they need to. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at just one set, just otherwise it gets confusing. So we remove one set. We've got these are where they go in. These are, these are where they sit in these ports here. And then we've got these individual ports. We've got inlets and exhaust ports here for, well, if you see what I mean. It, it lets, it allows it in, and then obviously it then allows it to come back out again to the, to the cylinder we're trying to inject the fuel to. Now if we have a look at how these drillings are done, it gives an idea of what, what goes on here. If I get a drill bit, we can see what actually goes on with these and what angle they are seeing. See that goes at that sort of angle and that one goes at that angle. And what we can do, we can see they go, both go into the same port there. So if we look down here, we can tell by the angle that's at, can't you, where they're going to go. They're obviously not going to go into that one. They're going to go into that one there. I don't know if you can see those going in. But to, to prove the point, let's just put that down there. You see that, that it's not in that port, it's in this port. See? It's not in that one. It's in that one. And then if we go the next one along, we got the different angle, you see? So that way, it's going into this port here, isn't it? Into that one and not that one. So that's just to sort of give you an idea of what goes on with those what that's all about. So let's go back to our distributor body here and say this is the internal distributor body. So I've marked on here which one's which to correspond with, with how it goes with the outer distributor body. That's our drive end. Now there you go. There's number one there. So there you go. That lines up with our number one. And then I've marked them out in, in pen two, three, five, four, six. So we can see where they are on it. So we're trying to work out what goes on here. So let's, let's, let's just, we're just going to look at number one. We're not going to look at anything else because it's, it's, let's try and concentrate on just one port. So that is where the fuel will come out of and then go to number one. And so it has to get into this rotor and then it has to get out again. So the way it would come in is if we follow this round, comes into it there. So this whole this whole area is full of fuel when it's under pressure. And then it can as the rotor goes round, it exposes one of these ports, which allows it to come into it, allows it to actually get into the port there. So let's look at that. So so let's just check that's in line. So if we go around here to number one, it's in line with number one, isn't it? There you go. So that shows what it's doing. So if we were to pop this in here, now we've got to get it around the right way, haven't we? So that's the drive fringe with, with the um, with where the bolts on the drive fringe, and that's the that's the other end, the, the um, control end. So effectively that goes in like that, doesn't it? So let's line it up with number one. And we see that's coming up with number one port. See how that is there? So that's lining up there with number one, isn't it? So that's it. That's lined up. So what we're going to try and look at is on the actual rotor, try and work out which one number one is. So let's have a look. How many holes have we got? How many do you think we've got? It should be six, shouldn't it? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So six. Let's see how many, how many sort of, um, how far along do we reckon that is? Well, we know it comes to there like that, don't we? So that's look, look, that looks like that's our number one port, doesn't it? That one there. That's lining up with that. If we go off this face there, and we allow that to line up with where that would. That's going to be number one. So let's see how that fits with these.
we're looking at the wrong set here, aren't we? So what are we looking at? So that's, that's our backstop, which goes up against our drive flange. And then we're looking at one, two, three. So this, this, is, this is the um, uh, four, five, six injector. That's for that one. So we'll get rid of them and we'll bring the other set back in. And we'll, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Right, let's get them back into shot. See what we're dealing with here. It's becoming a bit magnetised, isn't it? Right, so that's our backstop. And then we're coming along to here. So we're going, we're going one, two, three. So that's going to be number one. That's our number one. And that corresponds with that area there, doesn't it? That is effectively where the fuel charge will go into there. So if we put this in, if we assemble this one in here, so we're looking at that one there, aren't we? So we, we, it wants to be in there, which is this one here. So we're going into this like that. So you can tell that's there because it's stopping there, right? Let's assemble this one, see what we got. Now we're going to look at one, just one cylinder to begin with because it's way too confusing to look at any more than that at the minute. So that's it there. So if we look in there, we can see, we can see that that opens up. You can see that that's around the nose of that, of that little piston, isn't it? So that would be the one. So it's, we got a port there, and we've got the corresponding one around here. So what will happen is as this is going round, as this is turning round, let's find it, so there's number one. And we're looking for that one, aren't we? So that one lines up with number one, doesn't it? That's the one that lines up with number one. You see there? So as this turns round, as it's driving round, the charge can go into there via that port. And then as that turns round and it opens up and it comes round. So this is turning, this is staying still. As it uncovers here, that charge that has gone in there can then exit through here to the cylinder. But what makes that exit from there is that it's, it's, been, it's gone in, it's gone in via that other port at 110 pounds, so it's under pressure. But what also is happening is that when the corresponding port for another cylinder, I don't, I'm not going to say which cylinder at the minute, is uncovered as this turns round. Well, of course, that is going to put 110 pounds pressure behind the other shuttle. And of course, that will then, when this one opens up, shoot it out with that 110 pounds behind it. So not only has it gone in there, that metered fuel at 110 pounds pressure, it is also being pushed out at 110 by the corresponding piston. So let's have a look at that and we'll see. So what are we looking at? So this is what they do, they shuttle effectively up and down. So we're saying that was our number one, wasn't it? So when that fuel goes in there, into that one, it's going to effectively push that that way, that shuttle that way, and that one, that's the backstop, so it stops there, so it'll push it that way. This can only go as far as the metering head allows it to go, which is the top bit, which is on that, on that uh, control unit. So that, that, that's controlled by the vacuum. So that allows that to move in that direction, the desired amount, to allow the correct amount of fuel to go in. So that's, that's there, that's waiting there, that charge. Then when it uncovers another inlet port for another cylinder, let's go with this one, it will go into there and it will shoot that out, that'll be under pressure, at the same time that that uncovers the, the exit port. So that'll shoot it that way, won't it? 110 pounds pressure. And it'll fill that one up. And so it will go on. So that's effectively how it works. Bit confusing. <laughs>
I said, difficult to impart this with any humour because it's a bit dry subject, isn't it? But there we are. But that's effectively what it does. So you get the idea. So it's all, all effectively down to this being full of, full of fuel at pressure. And then these are the inlet ports and these are the exit ports effectively. I shouldn't say exhaust because, of course, we're actually talking about an inlet, a charge that's being let into the, you know, so it's effectively, you know, if you tell me that's confusing, it's saying exhaust. But it is. That, that allows it in to the rotor and the shuttle, and then that allows it to exit it. And that's, that's effectively it. But what you have to have is you have to have a seal in here to, to, to stop all this fuel just leaking out via where the banjo goes in. So that banjo bolt goes all the way in, and that bottom's there, and then this has a little seal that goes in there, which stops it. Otherwise, what would happen is that all this, all this would be under pressure in here, wouldn't it? This area, and it would all just build up there and get past it. So if those seals are no good, it will leak all the time and get into here and then get in, you know, just start leaking down to the injector. So that's why these seals have to be in good, good fettle and everything has to be working nicely. Then there's O-rings on these as well to, to seal this when it's in, 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 the, in, the, um, in the body, as it were. But I haven't got those in there because it's too complicated to show it. So that, that's basically it. That's the theory. That's how it works. And I think that's enough for tonight, don't you? <laughs> it's... Um, We'll look at the metering head next week, and that's, that's the control system. But I think for now that gives you the idea. So, on that happy note, I'll say goodnight, and I'm going to go home. <laughs> <laughs>